Okay. This is a session um, to teach a few people uh, for present, uh, Sal, Curtis, Bill, and Mark, um, two languages. Uh, a language for describing cards, which we'll call the template language. And maybe if I write it here, you won't, I won't have to pause every time. Right? And then a language for describing stacks, which we, we call the stack definition, or SD. And I'll write that. The stack definition language we just call SD. The template language is called just that. Basically, Basically, <laughs> you're watching me through that. Basically, um, the division that you see between these two languages has to do with the nature of um, ha how much information we're dealing with in IAS stacks. We have stack structure, we have the format of cards, we have uh, condition based on a great deal of data that's coming into our system here in order to determine what the structure of the product is, and also uh, what individual cards look like. So we had to find some division, and this is a fairly natural one in, in, um, in the markup language world. This is a markup language of the final formatting um, description, uh, which we use the uh, Hypertext inter Interchange File Format, or HIFF, um, which we've been abbreviating as .HIF files. Uh, Basically, the, uh, hyperchange inter uh, the hypertext interchange uh, file format came from uh, using su uh, Supercard as a tool in order to create, um, uh, create something that looked like a card. And then there's a translator that takes HIF files and turns them into NRA structured card descriptions. Now, um, Basically, what this language, what this description looks like, this file format, we'll just call it a file format. What this looks like is, um, it's very simple. There are there are card definitions. Um, the there are attrib various attributes to cards, such as uh, number of buttons, um, number of fields, and and then there's an OD, which we call script. And the OD consists of, um, basically for, for card, it consists of uh, things such as copying text to a field that is writing text onto the final card that you see, uh, writing symbols or icons onto the field. So this is, uh, these are things such as command, string copy to a field number. Um, and text or an icon um, and a bunch of other stuff which we'll get into later. But basically every, everything that the behavior of any individual card is determined by, um, by the ODs of cards uh, and buttons and uh, also we define the fields as having certain characteristics being of certain color, have a, having a certain pattern, fill pattern. Um, Basically, this, this, this format describes, um, it is basically the language in which you um, describe a card, but it's an extremely uh, energy intensive process to do so. That is, um, uh, you, have to, you have to describe the fields completely, um, you have to describe uh, every button completely, and everything that you want every button to do for each card. This is a, a tremendous process just for one card. I mean, basically, a card with a few buttons and a few fields on it, with a few uh, icons on it, can be thousands of lines of code and uh, for thousands of lines of description of this kind. And uh, while that, and we have two two tools here for dealing with that problem: the fact that we have tens of thousands of cards in uh, our products, and yet we need to have these full descriptions of every card, that is, of every button and every field and how the card works. So how do we deal with that problem? Well, we have uh, two methods. Uh, one method is if you're building uh, a, a card that you know will never change, basically. That is, it's a, it's a complex card, um, has lots of buttons on it. 
we have a tool uh, that we use on Windows, on PC, which draws, <coughs> draws those buttons, draws those fields for you, uh, lets you manipulate a single card, creating a single huge HIF file. Then we have, uh, that's good only though for one card. What we want to do is we want to be able to create thousands and thousands of cards based on data. And so that is based on things that we know, uh, uh, customers' data about uh, sites and locations and, and events and all this sort of thing. So in order to create these thousands of cards, what we have created is a mark markup language, which basically allows you to uh, make a, a conditional card, if you will, a, or a template for cards. And the data is then merged in, much in the way as a merging application uh, puts data into fields in order to generate multiple letters or multiple, uh, multiple envelopes. In that very same way, what we do here is we have conditions in these templates um, that change the description based on well, whatever you tell it to change the description uh, based on. So, and we have two kinds of ways of manipulating, turning, turning a, a, taking HIF text and marking it up in a way that um, facilitates conditional cards being generated in the sense that a letter in a merging application is a conditional letter. It's a letter that based on certain conditions will change. This is a conditional card in that sense. So it's a, the template is it, basically because there are there'll be there if statements and whatnot that based on the data will change what you're going to do. So uh, we have two ways of doing that. We have um, uh, command lines, which are just the beginning of the markup command line. There's a there's just a, a pound sign in the first column, followed by something on the order of um, if. Um, I'll give you a simple example. I won't explain it yet. If exist um, um, and Mastercard um, mass um, master field is equal to field num field num is equal to field num plus one and if. This is the first kind of markup of the file. So these templates are just one file, a template, with uh, various stuff that looks like HIF in it, surrounded by uh, various uh, bits of the markup language, uh, which are preceded by column signs. Um, the other um, the other way that we do things in this template language, besides providing for these <coughs> separate lines, is to also insert certain things right actually into the text, so that things that conditionals that are made up here may produce a result that we can then incorporate in this text. Because as a template, this stuff doesn't ever get written out to our final file. We're trying to generate this huge HIF file which um, has none of this stuff in it. This stuff will uh, just be interpreted and uh, performed, executed, and disappear. And this stuff will get passed through. What we want, though, is we want certain values that are generated up here to uh, appear down here. So for example, um, fields um, and the uh, fields with um, Our, uh, the field numbers that we pass through, for example, is generated in the following way. Field num. And what this does is our, um, if we have bunches of lines like this at the very beginning of the template defining uh, fields for different kinds of things to get written into, for example, a MasterCard icon, Okay, that will appear on a location card for a restaurant. Um, then, after all, all <coughs> after they are all done, and we've incremented field them uh, as many times as we have fields, then field them will have the value that we need to for the total number of fields. Actually, it will be one. It will be plus one. We'll have to subtract one from it 
depending on how you, how you do your incrementing. So in any case, if we then want to pass that value um, to, through to the final HIF file, we simply put in this little substitute thing. These carrots just indicate, substitute the name of the value that's inside it for whatever value I've assigned it. In this case, um, the, the, it should be a number instead of you know, a string or an icon name or something like this. Um, and that number will get substituted here in the final, and, and when it's all finally written out. So that's, as you can tell, just like a letter, a merge letter, or something of that sort, where you've defined your uh, conditions of use, and you've defined the place that you want to put. And then, uh, the big question is, where does this value MasterCard come from? That is, this is what determines whether or not, uh, this is what determines how this is incremented. So what is it exactly, where is it that this, this comes from, this value comes from? Well, what we have, Preceding, <coughs> preceding the template line. And by the way, is this is this fairly clear to everyone? Okay. All right. What we have preceding the template language is um, a a series of files, each of which represents a stack um, in the the stack card model that uh, drives the IIS in in um, in NRA land. This um, we, these series of stack files have in them series of uh, uh, card data records. Um, in other words, here we're generating uh, here we're generating a full card, an HIF card. Um, but actually, the amount of data that drives it is very limited. It's little things like: is there a Mastercard? What's the name of this that's going to appear uh, at the top of the card? This sort of thing. There's, there's rather little data relative to the size of the final HIF file that's being generated. <coughs> and the f and these, these files we call RPL files from replication. Um, and they'll have a number like stack underscore you know, one dot RPL. And, and these files contain um, card, basically card data for the cards that are within this stack. So there'll be a series of these stack one, stack two, stack three, all the way out to your last stack, whatever that is. So uh, within here, we have a, um, the heading, subheading, uh, actually we have some global, global data for the stack, such as heading, subheading, region, this sort of thing. And there, it's, um, it's you know, a global data, um, this isn't actually a keyword, um, so I'll give you a, a concrete example. Uh, these are globals, something like region, heading. Heading is something like dining, lodging, that sort of thing. Subheading. Etc. those sorts of things. Um, usually there's a stack number, in this case one. Um, uh, and these will be pr replaced by real values. So region might be something like, I'm, I'm giving you the real values that will be in here now. Those that I was naming them for you. Bayern might be a region. Heading might be hotel. Subhead, or actually that's a bad example, of course, but heading might be something like uh, architecture. And subheading might be Cathedrals. Um, in any case, the um, this top line is our global values, and these are assigned the names that I, I curiously erased as I put these real values in. Those names are, are defined in a separate value, uh, in a separate um, sorry, in a separate file called RPL def, which defines what these values are named. So these are the real values, and the actual values are named in a file called rpldef. Um, the top of this file, <coughs> the top of this file, rpldef, has, in this case, would have the following: region, heading, subheading, and stack num. 
and that would be the top line of this, this file. In the data file, then, we'll have things that look like this. There'll be a tilde, and then there'll be, um, uh, there'll be a tilde, and then there'll be something like uh, location. Let's say location first page, which is a type of card. That is, uh, the first field is always one of the types of cards in our naming scheme for types of cards um, that matches a template. So this template will have a name. And actually, the file name is lockfp uh, for the template. So the file name is lockfp, and the data for the card is things like, um, well, one, where defined in REPLDEF, lockfp, the first field is MasterCard. Say whether or not it has a MasterCard, whether or not there is a, a that particular location accepts MasterCard. That's simple. So it's the, basically the data. Here's this is the real data. Some there's some other values here. There's some strings such as um, such as the name of the place. Say it's a uh, say it's a restaurant called uh, or we're in Byron and a Hofbrau House. Okay. So um, and there'll be other fields. <coughs> There'll be other fields. Uh, actually, an important field here is the card number itself, which is um, actually usually here. So I'll put the, make the first field card number one. And uh, our first field will actually be card num here. And our second one will be MasterCard, etc. So the point of this file REPLDIF is to make, create names for the data that we then use in the template language. Okay, it's a pretty, pretty normal um, description um, uh, language for this sort of thing. Um, then we have a series of cards in this file. They can be lock FPs. They might be any card uh, you've created, any type of card you've created and decided to create a template for. Uh, location cards. Um, we have things called search one cards and search two cards, which are different levels of menu. Uh, search two is right above a location. Search one is above that. Uh, one table of contents card, uh, etc. These will all have data in them, and they'll all have matching definitions for names, for naming purposes, um, in here as well, in REPLDEF. So basically, um, you have, for example, just to give you a real example, we have in Germany, I think, uh, I don't know, 105 stacks, um, something on that order. And uh, each, uh, each stack is, the reason we have so many stacks is because we've divided them up by uh, often by region and by heading, generally, and um, and and the stack number will, of course, be in this region data, uh, this uh, global data up here. So we have bunches of stacks. The reason we have them separated um, uh, into separate stacks in that manner is because we want to uh, jump from one card to the next for a technical reason. <coughs> for a technical reason, we just, we want to keep them in uh, within one stack. That is, when you jump from a a first men, uh, a table of contents to the um, to your first card. You want that first card, that menu, to be on the same stack as the second card and on the location card for speed purpose, for speed reasons because we don't want to change the back background picture. And if you cross stacks on um, the NRA spec says that you can't keep the background picture. But in any case, that's just why we're organizing things in stacks this way. Um, but it's also it's also a, a, you can organize it logistically any way you like uh, in this in this manner, and the RPL files create uh, contain all these card descriptions with the sort of minimum data that we've discussed, and then or that I've, I've told lectured you on, and and then you use the named data in here, and this creates the final HIF file, which gets translated into NRA 
card stack format uh, for the disk. Um, and I want to I want to tell you where this file comes from <coughs> because these RPL files contain all this data, but they also contain uh, actually this, the information related to the structure of the stack. They have all the cards in the stack. All the cards in the stack are so associated with the right stack. They're in the right file. Um, they are all the cards in the stack um, that we want to quickly jump to each other, we have in the same stack. But more than that, we often have fields that are um, uh, have values such as, uh, you know, well, in this case, maybe uh, this one's blank and this one is, uh, you know, 50. And, and that will relate to a field. I'm going to make up a, a sort of a, a nonsense card here. Um, uh, jumps, we'll call it, uh, call this, um, call this uh, jump stack, um, jump card. Okay, and in this case, jump stack is empty. We want to go within the same stack. Jump card is 50. That means that I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to create a link between this card and card 50 in the same stack. You might be excused. Um, card 50 within the same stack is, um, uh, it is, is basically structural information about the product because uh, we not only have all the cards, kinds of cards, all the particular cards that we want in the stack, but we've started now determining what the connection is like. When you hit a button on a certain card, you want to go to 50. So this value here, um, jump card, will get used in an OD down here, uh, which basically there'll be a, a go-to card, um, uh, uh, or there'll be a command go-to, um, you know, uh, this stack, actually it's a relative, Go to, go to relative, <coughs> go to relative 50. And um, so basically this, uh, this is being, actually we wouldn't use 50 here, of course, we use the actual value, the name that's been used here, jump card. And the template then, when this data is merged with this data, will pull this value, referenced, that is reference jump card, and when this, this um, template is used, jump card will be put there. And in the final HIF file, we have 50. And 50 is the number that we want to jump to. So in a sense, this, this file contains um, ver uh, basically no information about what the card finally looks like in terms of buttons and fields and arrangement of fields and whatnot. But it contains all the information about a card um, that we need to make those decisions and also information about how cards are arranged relative to each other and which cards are in a product. This actually becomes a very, this, the entire st the structure of any product is completely reflected in this, and this, uh, that is of the IIS of any, any, any product is reflected in this. <coughs> so how do we create something like this? How do we create these files? Um, you'll remember what REPLDEF is, and I'll um, I'll just refer to it separately. Actually, click, and here there's a little icon down here. That's RepelDef. Okay. So here, what actually creates this guy? RPL. Um, I'm not so interested in this anymore. Uh, because now we're embarking on how to actually describe the entire IIS of the product. Okay. I can say, uh, I, could, I could use a description of the following sort, and this is what, what the SD language is. Can you see me? Right here. Okay. Begin stack. Create a new card. Call that card a lock FP. Um, yes, it's a master. It's a, it has master. It accepts master. Let's see. No, uh, that'll come from the data. 
So MasterCard is equal to, I'm sorry, MasterCard, assigned to MasterCard, uh, dollar um, M card uh, from the data. Um, I'll explain this in a moment. Um, and what else did we use? We had name. Name, that is Hofbrauhaus House in this case, assigned to name, uh, dollar, <coughs> name, uh, square brackets. Okay, so what have I done here? Um, I've described only an n and stack down here. Well, I, what I've described is a, a one card stack, and that's not very interesting. Um, but basically, uh, this is this, the simplest example I can give you. Uh, when you begin a stack, a new one of these files is, is organized and arranged for you. Um, these fields, um, while not assigned for you, um, they, they uh, at least while they have, will have no values, they at least will be written out. That is, uh, there'll be four bars that separate the fields written out to the top of your file. Um, if you want to assign these values here, you have to assign them, uh, I'm sorry, you have to assign them in the following way. Uh, region, uh, region is equal to Byron, for example. And then um, new card, uh, new card is called, we assign the card a card type so that when we look at, uh, so that so that it gets written here, so that the template um, and REPLDEF and this file can be used to create the final HIF file. Okay, so basically these are names of templates. These are also names of templates, but you know, there it's also a, name, a template that matches one on one, one to one to a card type. So what we have is, um, in this case, something that just creates one card. Now that's not too terribly interesting because as we've said, sometimes these stacks can have 10,000 cards on them. Well, not too many have 10,000 cards on them, but they can. Let's give you a more full example of a stack description <coughs> in the way that we use it here. Begin stack, and stack down here. If you remember, there was a, I had something here that assigned to the name of the card um, a, uh, in, the, in, this, in this fashion, with this empty brackets here and the dollar sign. The point of that, the reason for the empty brackets, oh, it would be too hot, I understand. Uh, the reason for the empty brackets is that we have data that comes to us from customers and we've organized it in a, such a fashion that it will drive the creation of our stacks in the, in the following way. Um, we will have a loop which reads from the data. But, and so the data will be formatted some way. Okay, let's, uh, we have a standard format and, it's, um, and it has various, various fields you know, with name, and we've named these fields in a file called uh, FDF, field definition file. And this refers to the original data, um, rather raw data that we have. Before we know anything about the structure of the stacks, we have original data. And this original data is stuff, is basically all the locations, all the locations in our product, uh, and basically all the sites that we're going to be just describing in the product, for the most part. There are some other things, events as well. Um, so, uh, we have in this FDF file, uh, you know, name, uh, something like, uh, we have a lat long, for example, you know, latitude and longitude, and a few other things, uh, quite a few other things. But in any case, this data file consists of a series of records um, with these fields in them. So we want to refer to them when we're building stacks in some way. Okay, so the way we use it at the moment, given new that's 
uh, make it simple. Give a new, um, there's no dollar sign in this syntax. Give a new, <coughs> give a new name. Um, and then there's an, an open bracket, and well, I'll put it here. Open brace, close brace. Uh, give a new name. Create a new card. Create a new card and assign to it values such as well the final name and this name is being is the name referred to in REPL def finally appears on the in the merge side put an underscore on, uh, in front of it for a card field just to make it clear we also use this syntax also to make it different than local variables and that sort of thing within the language because it's a full featured language we just have these special things so that it's we have concise descriptions of what we need to do. Name is equal to dollar sign name. You know, make this lowercase to make it clear. Dollar sign name um, semicolon. Um, actually, I have to put card first, right? So underscore card is equal to um, uh, location. <coughs> first page of a location semicolon. Um, the card number. Which is um, uh, uppercase. In, this, in most cases, we do card num. And there's a global variable that maintains the card number that you're at as you're creating cards. And that's card num. And that's a keyword in the language. And um, that's it for the moment. So, what does this do? Um, this data has to be sorted, and the way we can do that, uh, actually we'll refer to this data, this is a, a, a file name, we'll call it, um, uh, call it Bayern dot, uh, restaurants. Okay. And we say, before this we say use, quote, Bayern dot restaurant. So we're saying this file that has all the restaurants in, in Byron in it, uh, use that. And then we want to sort it. Sort by, since there's only you can only use one thing at a time, one data file at a time. Um, sort by name. Uh, actually, we say, uh, in this case, uh, alpha, just to say what kind of sort it is. We have many kinds. Um, name. And what this will do is it will sort everything by the name. That's actually not good enough, but it, 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 you'll get a sense of what this means. Uh, then basically, all the names will be together. And when we go to a um, when we go to a, a new new name that we want a new location card for, it'll skip. This will skip forward to the next one, to the next one, just in case we have, for example, multiple data for the same name, which we often have. Um, because we've divided up, divided it up in certain ways. Um, so in any case, for every new name, create a new card, call it a location card, assign the name to um, the RPL file, and assign a card number. And we've started creating cards because if this card has um, 10,000 names in it, we've now just written code to create 10,000 cards. Okay, because this given new loop. Just finds another name, finds another name, finds another name, and creates a new card each time. So this is our this is our the basics of our description language for um, describing stacks. What time is it? Quarter to quarter to. So let's keep it to fifteen minutes more. Is that okay? Okay. Basically, um, at, at this point, it's it's best to actually look at examples. Um, but I can give you. Um, um. Okay, but and, and we we okay, have a fifteen minute question period. Let's do that. Is there okay. um, <laughs> some sort of capitalization convention or? Um, we do have one actually. Uh, this and I've violated it a few times here. But when you're writing on a blackboard, sometimes all your habits from the keyboard don't just get transferred over. Uh, I'm ashamed. <laughs> but um, uh, these are this is um, this is part keywords in the language. Um, most part are upper and lower case. This is nothing. They're case insensitive. Um, 
key uh, uh, fields from the FDF file, generally we keep lowercase. Um, field uh, names that <coughs> are going to be uh, names that come from the RPL def file, which are the same names that we write to here, uh, have an initial capitalization usually, and, and sometimes if it's a, a concatenated type word, we concatenate the inside here. Um, Template names are all caps, uh, lock FP, search one, this sort of thing. Um, and, uh, and there are a couple of uh, keywords in the language that are all caps, um, which are values. That is, there's card nom, there's a few things later that you'll see um, uh, first page, uh, first page and uh, current page and total pages, that sort of thing. Uh, which we'll explain later, but anyway, those value keywords are capitalized. Um, there's no naming convention, convention for um, for input files. They can have just about anything. File extensions that are important are FDF. REPL def doesn't have a file extension, although it probably should, um, because we have some, a, a number of different products, and we can change that name at any time. Um, but in any case, so there's an FDF file, a REPL def file, um, and these files are done, this, there's usually one file that describes the entire product. So there'll be a begin stack and stuff, begin stack and stuff inside for all the stacks in the product. Um, the reason is it's almost always that way. Every stack is quite, is somewhat different. And so uh, you could put, these, <coughs> we do have a loop you could put these within, but we almost never use them um, because they're just because they're, they're quite different. We also do um, a single file that has all these descriptions in it. It's very big. Um, I think uh, a couple of megabytes. And, uh, and it's difficult to edit. And so what we do is we've used, a, um, we've used macros. We use some, um, and I recommend uh, uh, to anybody read them. Um, read about M4. We use the GNU M4. Um, and uh, M4 is a macro language, which um, is a very simple macro language that works in the following way. If I have, um, I can define, um, I can define the word, um, let's see, Rest, rest, restaurant. Actually, we, we usually put a little M in front of it just to uh, to distinguish the fact that it's a macro. Uh, M restaurant stack. Define a restaurant stack as comma open single um, open single quote, uh, and then inside put a uh, begin stack da 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 da, and with um, a couple of uh, parameters, such as um, dollar one for uh, see, restaurant stack for region. So region is equal to dollar one. This sort of thing. Okay, um, and then uh, end, and then uh, close quote, close pr close um, parentheses, and then you use it in this way. You say m rest stack region names, um, say Empire, and then you say M rest stack, sorry, stack, um, stack, um, you know, Baden-Bertenberg, uh, etc. And um, so you can define, using M4, you can basically define any code with any substitute parameters that you'd like, um, and even substitute, uh, further substitutions, uh, that is, you can have a, within here defines of, uh, defines of macros that change depending on, you know, depending on uh, what kind of input values you have. And in that way, we've subdivided this huge file into a fairly simple file at the beginning that just does calls that are rather similar to this. Um, 
it says, you know, I want a stack like this, a stack like this, a stack like this, a stack like this. And so we have in the very first .m4 file, for example, for Germany, Germany .m4 um, basically has just 106 lines in it with a few other a few other things um, that define the stacks, and that's a very small file. And what it reads is a number of other files like uh, uh, Germany stacks.n4, which have the defines in them like this and like other defines and whatnot. That when we run the whole thing through m4 in the following manner. Um, M4 um, Germany dot M4 output goes to um, Germany dot SD. Uh, then it creates this this text this text file for us, and then we're set for um, uh, we're set for running this through a program. Is called SDRPL. SDRPL minus input file Germany.sd. And the result of this is, hundred, is uh, hundreds of, uh, of RPL files. And of course, as you remember, those RPL files are then used for the merge with the templates. Um, any questions? What are some of the keyword or key commands in, in these languages? Do you have a list of them? Uh, yes, we do actually, but only in the actual definition of the language of it itself. Uh, in in um, you can find the keywords, especially if you have access to the source of a language. You can find the keywords by looking at uh, their Lex and Yak files. That is, uh, but we actually will give you better documentation, or we may be creating it ourselves. Uh, from this very uh, this very class, but um, basically, uh, if you if there are .l files, and uh, for um, there are quite a few .l files and .dot um, uh, uh, .y files, lex and, which are lex and yak lex and yak fi uh, files. Um, lex, of course, has all the keywords in it, um, uh, and uh, we'll show that to you later sometime. Uh, but basically all the keywords in the language are recognized in the, in the lexical part of the compiler or interpreter for this language. Um, and of course the, the yak parser um, take given those tokens uh, uh, basically does things based on given syntax uh, given syntax or sequence of sequence of commands. Uh, so do you remember <coughs> reading about lex and yak? Do I advise it? Yeah. Yes, definitely. Um, not necessarily to use this language, but just because you guys are programmers and it's good to know. And actually, if you ever need to get into this at all, I, I use about uh, I, I, use, I use parsers pretty casually um, because they're pretty quick to put together. If you know Lex and Yak, you can put together a, an interpreter for a pretty big language. Actually, from scratch, you can put together an interpreter for a language like Basic in about a day. You know, so it's 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 a it's very useful to, to know compiler compiler tools because once you're very fluent in them, um, it allows you to, to create um, languages to describe what it is that you're doing over and over again that you'd like like to be able to just describe with a specific notation. And that's what we're doing here. I mean, um, the actual syntactical part of rec recognizing this stuff was a very simple task. Um, the hard stuff was. You know, having having it mean something like you know, generate stacks in this particular way and do this particular thing. Um, uh, link. I, I haven't described a number of parts of the language to you. Actually, probably the two major difficult parts of the language I still haven't described to you, but I will uh, maybe in a subsequent like, uh, lecture on this language. Um, but the the primary um, point of Lexignac is just to make the recognition of the language simple. I mean, and it, it's very fast, and so it's, it's always advisable to understand how to do anything fast. Without Lexignac, you really can't do languages. I mean, you can, you can they've done them, they used to do them a lot, <coughs> but parsers are just um, are very complex state machines, and uh, you can mess them up very easily, whereas why not have a simple thing that just takes a syntax, you know, um, such as, uh, you know, expression, you know, uh, 
uh, an expression is defined as an expression uh, plus an expression, and have a sequence of these things, uh, these kinds of rules, grammatical rules, you know, expression minus expression, um, and then pass this to a compiler compiler, and it creates a compiler that will parse any arithmetic statement for you. you know, so I mean, it's it's a very it's very useful to know compiler compiler tools. And the book I'd recommend if you don't, uh, there, there are two. Um, uh, the simplest introduction, I think, is actually, well, the papers, the original Unix papers by uh, Ahel Kernigan and, um, um, and the third guy. Um, you know, that, that, that whole bell set of people. Um, and any, uh, Hopcraft, I believe, was the third one. He was actually here at Stanford. Um, and, that, and those are, uh, they're just called YAC. Actually, the YAC, the M4 um, paper and the, um, the Lex paper are all in the standard Unix papers, which um, there are a million copies of them around the here. The standard Unix papers, that's yeah. a book? Uh, it's, it's actually, can you get this book? There, it's usually called volume, I think it's called like volume three of the manuals. So basically, if you, if you look at, um, fi if you find, they're also online, I believe in a book or answer book or something like that um, uh, on the sun's a book um, so there's on online versions of the papers and um, if you dig around on the shelves over here you can find uh, even the you know the PC unixes and stuff have <coughs> have the standard papers for M4 and Lex and Yak and you can read them there um, and there there are a couple good books there's a nutshell nutshell not showing it. That does a, a, a Lex and Yak book that's pretty good now in the second edition. I think it's just called Lex and Yak. And um, uh, a really nice introduction is in a book by um, uh, Plower, I guess is, is it was Plower, um, called um, The Unix Programming Environment, which was uh, is one of the Prentice Hall white books on Unix, along along with the C Kernigan Kernigan Ritchie, uh, Kernigan and Ritchie C book and um, the um, the Unix programming environment, which I think is by Plower, Kernigan and Plower. And um, that has a really nice section in it introducing Lex and Yak and how to, how to create languages with it. Um, but in any case, uh, this, we'll have a second lecture. This has um, a number of very tricky features in it. Uh, and uh, one of them is a feature that allows you to do masses of links from cards to other cards based on your data. That is, um, you, you 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 create something like a, a, a something like a um, a relational description of the type of card that you want to link to other types of cards, and you run it, and it creates all these links for you between cards, and finds the card for you and assigns the number. Uh, that's an interesting part of the language, and it saves a great deal of programming time. So basically, it takes a while to get to get used to this this one. This is a very hard language to get to get used to, um, and that's why we're creating the stack editor, which in I don't know maybe three four months time, uh, this will just this will still exist, but it'll be you'll be using a visual interface which will create this stuff for you, so you don't have to use M4, you don't have to use this stuff, but this will still be underneath it. Okay, um, the template language we're not planning on on. We're creating a visual tool for that uh, five months down the road, and uh, in the meantime, everybody's going to have to use it. I think for the eval disk, uh, you're not going to be modifying this stuff from Florida very much because the structure of the product is very similar. Maybe the names of the data files will be different because the data is different, and I'll help you with that. Um, but a lot of things, most of the things you'll be changing are in the, the other language we saw here, the markup language, and that, that which gives you full control over the cards. Um, so, and that's the one actually that the markup language is probably the most useful one for you to use to get to know now because um, uh, th just because the learning curve is much shorter on it, this is this this takes a lot more thought and, and understanding to get in, get into it. And I'll I'll explain some more maybe in the next the next time around um, what this looks like. It, it's, um, I mean, you guys are getting I think getting beat. A little bit. Do you, do you want to? Do you want to go into the, the the other features of the language a little bit? This one, or it'll, uh, we could do ten minutes, or we could not do it. It's up to everybody. Raise your hand if you want to do ten more minutes. <laughs> 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 
Yeah. Okay. Bill, let's, where are you? Let's, let's save it for next time. Let's save it for next time. Okay. Good. Say goodbye. Okay. So we'll do it. Uh, we'll do this in the next class in um, uh, in a week and a half, I guess, or so. Okay. Okay.